Hello friends, welcome to the post-refit Tretea boat tour. I've been stoked to do this video because it's going to be a good chance for me to see like side-by-sides of all the work I've done over the last five years. Um, so this first episode, we're going to do like the deck tour and then on the next episode will be, you know, uh, the cabin and down below tour. We're sitting here at Marina del Rey at a guest slip. So there's a lot of activity out on the water. It's a Saturday morning. Let's get into this tour. So let's start the tour at the stem and with the ground tackle. We have a 45 pound Mantis and 300 feet of brand new HT uh, 5 8 chain attached to 200 feet of nylon half inch road. So we have ground tackle for days and we can go seven scope in a lot of depth. Um, we went with the 45 pound anchor as the storm anchor as our primary so that we don't have to worry about it ever. If something happens in the middle of the night, then we're set and we just, you know, don't have to worry about it. Previously, when we first installed the ground tackle setup, the original ground tackle setup, this boat didn't have an anchor locker or anything. So I built out the anchor locker, which you'll see in the below decks tour. Um, and I had a 35 pound Delta, 80 feet of 3 8 BBB chain and a ton of road, like 500 feet of rope road. Um, but yeah, once since we've replaced to all um, chain, uh, it's been a dream, especially with this Mantis. Like contemporary anchors can't be beat. Um, a lot of people are like, well, why didn't you get a Rockner, a Rockner, Rockner? I'm sure Rockners work great. Um, I've seen the infamous like does not reset video on YouTube. And after seeing that, I decided the only anchor I would buy is a Mantis. And again, I'm sure Rockners do just fine, but um, for me, Mantis was the only choice. And 45 pounds, big, strong, and ready. Um, we have a manual low frans windlass, which is very slow going. That's one thing that I will upgrade in the future. I will get like a electric manual um, windlass, like a, a, an electric windlass that has the manual option. Um, I would like to get the exact same one, uh, but it's just out of our budget right now. so we'll keep hand cranking away. Um, other than that, that's our ground tackle setup. We have a new big bow roller that we had to add on um, uh, with this 45 pound anchor. So um, yeah, that the, the old one got really torqued and tweaked at the Channel Islands. So this new one is super bulldog and ready for anything. So all of our lifelines we replaced with Dyneema, got rid of the one by 19 stainless uh, cable that was coated in plastic um, so and we did double lifelines before we only had single um, and I made these handmade these teak dead eyes to, to adjust the tensioning on them um, and we absolutely love these lifelines they're they're nice to touch um, they last between five and seven years where you know steel lifelines last you know maybe ten years but you never know when they're gonna fail and um, we love these Dyneema lifelines. They're amazing. You can splice it yourself. Um, it's really affordable. And um, yeah, we wouldn't have anything else on our lifelines. We also replaced all of our stanchions. Our original stanchions had this style, like just slide in and we replaced them with welded base stanchions. We got these little collars for our secondaries. 
So all the stanchions now are welded base, which is much stronger. You don't have to worry about them pulling out. And, um, and then down below decks, uh, we backed it with G10 backing plates. Um, so those things are, are ready for kind of anything. I replaced our original wooden hatch that let tons of, of water in with this Lumar hatch. Um, I think the first person I saw to do this upgrade on an Alberg 30 or a Triton was James Baldwin on his YouTube channel. So I used that as like my template for doing the upgrade on mine. I went with this, this shape uh, to match that, the trapezoid shape to match the original shape of the hatch. Um, and I built up all these edges, the, the bedding the, and everything. And um, this and the hard dodger are the two best sort of like upgrades I've done with the boat. Like this lets so much light in and so much air and it keeps all the water out. So these Lumar Ocean Series hatches are, are incredible. If you have a vintage boat and you can do this upgrade, I highly suggest it if you're doing any kind of real cruising. Um, I also added a smaller Lumar to the head. So there used to just be like a Dorad box there that let air in, but this is much better. We get a lot more airflow. And um, so yeah, the, that's the hatch situation and it's awesome. Originally, Tritea just had Hank on sales. Um, when we redid the mast, um, we installed this Pro Furl roller furling, and what a dream, man. It's like, I've never had a boat, all my boats have always been Hank on sale, so it's been such a luxury to be able to um, furl in the sail, shorten sail, and not have to come forward in nasty weather to pull the sail down when things get rough. Uh, so yeah, Pro Furl set up, and um, oversized for our boat so that we don't have to worry about anything. And on to our new mast. Um, this project was a beast, but I'm very excited that I did it. Um, we got a used mast off of the Santana 30 um, that was in much better shape and more robust than our original mast. So went ahead and completely restored it all the way from everything. I stripped everything off of it, cut the top off, had a custom masthead made the uh, Ventura Harbor Boatyard to, to my specs. Um, ran all the halyards internally. Clutches on every halyard. Uh, we did a Solent stay um, with its own sheave and halyard. And a uh, dedicated storm trysail track. So when we get our new set of sails, eventually we'll get a storm trysail made for it. Um, all new rigging, one by 19. A lot of people are always asking me, oh, what about Dyneema? Like, I, if I was doing coastal cruising and not, you know, doing kind of the wild stuff we plan on doing in the next decade, I probably would have went with Dyneema, but I feel like you have to really, that stuff stretches and creeps. So you have to tune that stuff more than one by 19. I wanted to put something on that I didn't have to think about for a decade other than regular checks and like, you know, general tuning. So one by 19, stay locks all around. Um, I did a double spreader rig on this setup, so we have, um, you know, our intermediaries are like the backups for our cap shrouds, um, radar, spreader lights, steaming light, so much crazy stuff we never had before. We have a uh, new to us boom, it was used off another boat that was doomed, and uh, cut her down to size, got her fit out. Um, we moved the chain plates externally so that we can see them. They're massively oversized. The rigging, I oversized the lowers, but we kept the original cap shrouds, forestay and backstay were all quarter inch. And we stayed with that so that we're not transferring unnecessary loads from the um, rig to the hull. So the only only rigging that we oversized were the lowers used to be like 3 16 and we we brought everything to one quarter so that we can all of our spares like match every cable on the boat next thing we'll briefly talk about is our hard dodger which i handmade custom fit to the boat um, if you're new to the channel there's a video that i talk about how i went about that process uh, very 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 important upgrade for the boat and it is it's changed everything from the look of the boat to the comfort underway and you name it even under anchor we can leave the hatch open and everything and get fresh air while not worrying about weather getting in as easily so yeah the hard dodger was a game changer for sure um and i don't know how we ever lived without it 
with the hard dodger we installed these opening hatches so that you can see out at night you can get fresh air in and um, easily close them so that you know if, if you got waves coming over or breaking then everything's protected in there wooden handrails to accent our original wooden handrails bulletproof lexan curved mr steady dog here's the inside and then this is like you know a little work in progress we're going to be kind of fitting this out to like stow stuff better we're going to put some grab rails we're also going to put like a sort of elect you know like a wooden shelf there with like a usb charging station and a ram mount for the ipad and everything so we're underway we can have our navigation right there as well um but man what a difference this dodger makes huge upgrade now we're in the cockpit let's talk about our solar setup we installed two 100 watt um, adjustable rigid uh, Renology panels um, and we have a 50 watt flexible on the turtle um, and uh, so we have 250 watts of solar and we have our battery bank is two um, hundred amp hour batteries so we have 200 amp hours total on our house bank and then a separate starter battery that's 100 amp hours and we have a pretty limited sort of like electronics draw on the boat so you know we're not we're not taking a lot of electricity at night so in the morning by like 10 a.m our battery bank is topped up which is fantastic um, on a regular sunday day here in southern california that might change a little bit as we move into places where it's like more cloudy or foggy but um it really does the trick like i spent you know four weeks without being plugged in and my batteries were topped up the whole time so yeah uh, awesome awesome you know off the grid upgrade and very necessary i made the panels adjustable so you can just loosen this lever and lower them up and down so if you're in heavy seas or something you need to drop them down or if you want to just point them to the sun then um, they're fully adjustable in that manner also here in the cockpit we installed lumar 46 self-tailing winches these things are incredible like we had the original our original winches were the bronze old school style these self-tailing lumars are such a dream and make life so much easier in heavy weather or anything it's like or even under anchor if we're tending the stern road it's it's so awesome to be like hands-free just like you know two speed dial it in while we're talking about the winch department we installed these secondary winches lumar 40s these would be good flying spinnaker having a backup you know whatever you need we've never had secondary so we're excited to have um, that as an option in our setup uh, replace the tiller it's a more beautiful long tiller the other one was just straight and kind of kind of stubby we saved it for a spare we got this teak grate for the cockpit off of a junk boat and it's so much nicer than just the dirty cockpit floor so we enjoy that a lot as we come aft we have our stern anchor set up here ready for easy deploying um, we get our get our stern road and everything in a bag we pull it up on deck tie it off and then deploy that once we get under anchor and we need it um, we have our iridium go satellite external antenna this is a gps um, ais dedicated antenna for ais uh, we have as like receiving we don't transpond um, but that's nice because you know we're the ones that should be watching out for the big ships not the other way around necessarily this is the style winches we had uh, on the boat before, and this is our main sheet winch. Um, eventually, I'd like to replace that with a self-tailing winch as well. When I bought the boat, there was no instrumentation, no gear, nothing. The boat was completely kind of gutted. Um, so I've installed Raymarine Tridata uh, ST60 Plus and then the Wind. Um, when we installed the new mass, and oh my gosh, it's, it's so nice to know what the wind speed is instead of just like roughly guessing and i found that i definitely guessed shy of what the actual wind speed has been in the past with that ray marine tri data i have a repeater down in the nav station you'll see in the next video that um at so that i can see all of the instrumentation while down below as well which is really handy i also installed this beautiful richie navigator compass uh fantastic compass we also added a 
vintage cello mat wind vane. It's from 1972. It's the original model. Um, it has given us a little bit of trouble. I've repaired it and reinstalled it, and now it's just kind of wait and see how the repair holds. Okay, now let's talk about everything below the waterline. Um, this boat is from 1965, um, so all of her seat cocks were frozen shut when I got it and very corroded and kind of scary. Um, I sailed with them in that condition for years and just kept an eye on them and never had any problems, but um, it was always a safety concern for sure. When we hauled out at Ventura Harbor Boatyard, we replaced every bronze fitting on the entire boat and we replaced it with the Graco tri-flange. Um, you know, the best of the best. And um, it gives a lot of peace of mind knowing that every single seacock is replaced and every through hole is replaced and all done by my hand. Um, we were able to eliminate one of the holes, which is always good, where the old speed transducer, we got rid of that because we got a combination depth speed transducer, which our speed transducer has never worked anyway ever since we installed it. But at least we got rid of that hole and, um, you know, plugged it up with G10 and, and glassed over it and everything. Uh, we also sanded the bottom and did all bottom paint, did topside paint at the same time. And um, at the same time, we found out that we had to have a new stern tube made so we had a custom bronze stern tube made uh, we went ahead and upsized our prop shaft to one inch which has been kind of the standard size since the 80s and um, ours was seven eighths before so it was harder to get parts for and um, the boatyard's like well if you're doing this now you might as well just bring it up to the standard which we did um, so we replaced the prop shaft we got the stern tube made replaced the cutlass bearing we had to get a new sh prop shaft uh, we had to get a new propeller because ours had given corrosion and it was like brittle and rotten you could carve it like cheese yeah but the haul out was extensive we we're hauled out a long time but we have so much peace of mind knowing that the boat is safe and stable now with all of our new fittings okay let's talk about the mass project from the top down I designed a masthead that I wanted. Uh, I made a wooden pattern out of it, out of MDF, and I took that to uh, Ventura Harbor Boatyard, and they fabricated it for me in aluminum. It did cost quite a bit of money, but I got exactly the masthead that I wanted for my application. It allowed me to run all of our halyards internally, and then I made a plate for the top for all of the equipment that attaches to it. We installed a brand new VHF antenna. We installed the Raymarine uh, wind meter, we installed an amazing light that's a tricolor anchor light strobe combo and it has a photo sensor so the anchor light you can just leave the anchor light on and when a daylight happens it turns the light off so you're not wasting any power and then if you're away from the boat when the sun goes down your anchor light comes on automatically which is incredible we have a strobe as i mentioned for emergency purposes um, so that'd be nice if we're somewhere far off and a boat looks like it's going to run us down We can turn that on to, di to divert them or let them know that we're there um, And then a tricolor which gives us a much greater visibility Where our original bronze fittings on the side of the boat, we think they're beautiful. We don't want to change them So but they don't give the best sort of visibility, especially if there's a sail down or something um, It's really hard to see those so the tricolor gives us extra safety to where people can see us even in high seas. We installed a Windex up top, which is nice. We've never had one. Um, it's so funny, these little things that most boats have, it's like we're getting these luxuries that are just wild to us. <laughs> As I mentioned, the mast was a complete build out, custom build out by myself. Um, we installed all the tangs, we installed all the hardware. We installed this, you know, we sourced and found spreaders at the junkyard and on eBay had spreader brackets made at uh, the Ventura Harbor Boatyard. Um, I installed a pair of, a single pair of um, folding mast steps at the masthead so that when you get to the top, if you wanna stand up and work at the top of the masthead, it's much easier to do that. We didn't install them all the way up and down for a couple reasons. For one, um, I was worried about them making noise in the long run that's also like added windage up top um, and also i've read a number of accounts where people that had them previously said that they found when they had those they tended to unsafely just scramble up to do something without getting clipped in and it it made it easier to put themselves in like a deadly situation so um we just went ahead and just did the two up top 
um, because we're generally short-handed sailing and not just single-handed sailing. On the previous mast, we had just the main halyard and the jib halyard and the uh, spinnaker halyard. Now we have a jib halyard, a spare jib halyard, the solent stay halyard, um, a spinnaker halyard, main halyard, and a topping lift. And again, we have clutches uh, on five of those lines, which is pretty amazing. We installed Lumar 8s as our winches on the mast, which I am not crazy about, and I actually want to install larger winches, and I would love to install self-tailing, but it's a matter of finding them or having the funds to pay for that. Um, other than that, like the winches are my only complaint about the mast. Everything else, I really love it. On the boom, um, I cut it down to fit our boat and then installed the reefing blocks where they need to be. We have our main sole is a full batten main with um, three reefs. We only have the third and the second reef installed right now because we had to cut the main down when we put our new mast on. So when we get our new main made, we it will be full battened with triple reef as well. For the head sole on our furler, we currently have about a 120 um, with a Yankee cut. And um, again, it's a used old sail that was recut and just fit for our furler. And when we get our new set of sails, um, I would, I'll probably get a 110 with a Yankee cut uh, for our furler. As far as other sets of sails go, we have a storm jib that we can hank on to our Soylent stay. We have a spinnaker from a Bristol 30 a buddy gave us with a sock, so easy to deploy. And, um, we have a hank on drifter like jenniker sail that we can hook onto our soylent stay as well i would like to add an a sail at some point i think those are a lot safer and easier to manage for shorthanded sailing I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Tritea deck tour. I did not get a chance to film the below decks tour, so that's going to have to wait until a future time. If you enjoyed the episode, please give it a thumbs up. And tell us what you thought down in the comments. And um, hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss any future episodes. We're currently ghosting along in the Pacific Ocean, 200 miles from Hawaii. And I really look forward to sharing that episode with you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it because it's coming up. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.